Holly Cotton here, and I am joined today by artist Jamar Darun. And Jamar is actually, I we were laughing before the show because he's an artist, and I was just doing my little business on Instagram, scrolling on my Explorer page, and I actually saw one of his reels, and I was like, oh wow! Like I love seeing people living their passion, doing all of that, Jamar. So all of my shows are usually highlighting people who have a passion and now they're paving the way for other people. So thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. So first, for anyone who hasn't stalked your Instagram like I did, <laughs> <laughs> and you guys, anyone that's listening to the audio, Jamar actually has some of his pieces behind him. And the heart piece is the one that I saw the reel of that caught my attention. So um, if you're if you're going to stalk his page, that heart one is the one that I, I loved as well. So, Jamar, can you go into, I'm going to ask you in a few minutes about uh, how you became an artist, but can you just give us an idea of what kind of art you do? Well, first of all, thank you, Holly, for having me. Um, my name is artist Jamar Duran. Uh, but the type of art I do is just all over. Like I said, I just try to um, not box myself in, so... Um, I have different styles, different things that I dabble in between. But um, amongst all, I, I usually paint with acrylic. Uh, but, um, you know, I use wood. I've made computers. I've, you know, done clothes. So just all over for the, you know, from a, from a general perspective. Okay, got it, got it. And I did watch one of your videos that talked about how you actually came about being an artist. So can you share us? share with us that story as well, how you decided to make this like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna be an artist. I'm gonna start selling my stuff. Um, I just um, really just, you know, decided to do it. Um, it was one of those things that I wanted to do for like, you know, mental peace. It was really just for me personally. And um, how I am just in my life is, you know, what, uh, in, in, in the business field, it's just uh, whatever people take seriously, I take seriously as well. So I saw that my work started getting out and I just, you know, saw that I just started getting better with it. And um, I've incorporated the uh, business aspect, the sales aspect with my art and um, it just took off from there. So that's mainly, you know, um, what I've, you know, just what I've been, you know, going through with it in terms of, so have I'm, you, just, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. Have you always been an artsy person, like from a child, or is this something that you decided, like when you turn nineteen, I'm gonna start doing art? <laughs> like, how did you decide yeah. that this was gonna be um, your thing? I played with I played with um like small, you know, like in, in in middle school, I played with art a lot, but I never really just took it to that level, right? So I just felt like it was just one of those those phases in my life. Um, and then when I got a little bit older, you know, I just basically, uh, you know, decided that I needed something um, to, 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 to bring me balance in my life. And of course I couldn't sing or dance. So I picked art, <laughs> I guess, you know, so I just picked art and, um, and I studied it, became a student of the game and, uh, and I'm still a student of the game, but most, most importantly, I just studied it and I, you know, I, it became a part of me. And I always tell people, um, you know, art shows me. So, you know, that's just one of the main things that I just kind of, um, you know, speak on whenever, you know, I'm asked that question. Okay. I like that. Art shows me. That's a unique answer. I love that. I love that. Yeah, yeah. So like I, I was saying before, when I saw the video, I saw you basically were like delivering a art piece um on Instagram in Hollywood and you were okay. um delivering it I think it was like Hollywood studios or, studios or something so right, how right, did right. it feel to have someone like Corey Hardrick validate your work um it felt it actually felt um very magical um I think well the the, the panic originally is for uh Sylvester Powell uh, which is a great actor. I mean, it's, you know, it's a great guy, even better human being, but a, definitely a great actor. So the painting was for Sylvester Powell, and um, which is an actor on All American Home. Come and go watch that if you haven't seen it. It's a great show. Um, but I basically, you know, when, you know, whenever I got there, um, I just, you know, I, I just was going through the motion of getting my art to that, to the Hollywood studios. And, 
he just came out and he said, hey, man, it's uh, Corey Hardrick. And I said, I don't know who that is for sure. He said, man, I, he, he just wants to meet you. And uh, he said he has to meet you. So, um, you know, whenever he came out and uh, we spoke and we had a, a beautiful dialogue, you know, we just talked about a lot. And then um, basically he just told me how it felt and, you know, what it, what it resembled for him. And so uh, just to see that, and to see my art go that far, I mean, even from where I am now all the way to the West Coast is a magical thing, but also for it to touch someone abroad, I think that is a very magical thing. And it also drove me to, you know, uh, drove me to, you know, be, you know, just actually pick up art and be a little bit more consistent with it, right? So, yeah, definitely a great thing. And uh, shout out to those, to those, uh, those people out there, you know, the Hollywood. Hollywood, uh, All American Homecoming. Excuse me. Uh, thank, shout out to All, All American Homecoming for having me and um, creating such a um, hospitable um, environment for me. Yeah, it's like you know. Sometimes we go along in life and we're doing all of these things, and 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 it's like I'm passionate about it, but. Right. What is the reception from others about what I'm doing? So whenever right. whenever you get someone, you're like, I love this picture. I think this painting right. looks fabulous. Like, I think I've got something going on. But, you know, you're like, well, do I? Or is it just me? True. <laughs> so <laughs> when you hear someone else and they're, they're doing that and you're like, like, oh my gosh, like you're very talented. I know it's definitely like a humbling, but like an elated experience as well. Like you're like, you know, I'm not going to my own horn, but sure enough. FYI, you know, yeah, I'm getting right. co-signed on over here. Sure enough. <laughs> yeah. And there's a, there's a balance that comes with it. I mean, I mean, whenever you stay down and you work on something so hard and and you put that energy out into the world, into the in the universe, even with other people, right? Um, you just expect it to come back, but at the same time, you stay grounded within yourself. Because um, I feel like just artists, I mean, whatever I create is for me, you know, and as long as I'm happy with it, um, I'm good, but for everybody else to see it and connect with it, it just means a whole lot more, um, you know, so. It's just what it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's whenever you start saying, um, put some respect on my name. You know, like <laughs> it, that's that's when yeah, you that's yeah, when you nah, start saying yeah. stuff like that. But you know, we're gonna let nah, you I'm be saying. humble. <laughs> So um, now that you, like you said, you've been in this art field for a while, a, a uh -huh. while, do you feel like there were any black artists doing what you're doing that kind of inspired you? Or is there any artists that you look at their work and you kind of use that as a, a reference for what you're doing? Um. From an um, artistic standpoint, uh, black artists, not really, but from a business standpoint, all of them. Um, I have a lot of artists that I look to and I refer to from a business aspect, um, especially Flam Manley, uh, a guy named, artist named Phil, um, Justin Wallington. Uh, there's just a lot of different uh, black artists, you know, that I, I, I look at and I admire um, not just because they create dope art, but because they understand the art business as well. They understand the business aspect. And I just feel like that's with anything, even with music. Music is art. You have music, you have the music business. Um, um, you have, you know, you have even sports. You have sports, you have the sports business. So the people that I really just look up to, uh, Black artists, I'm looking at them and I'm admiring them not only for the art, but mostly, like I said, just for the, just for the business aspect of them. Uh, aspect of it, excuse me. Right. And I think that's a very good point. I'm glad you actually said that because I think a lot of people you see all this part about, oh, okay, well, I'm going to be a painter or I'm going to be a designer, but you don't have a mentor or you don't know how someone else is navigating this field. You don't know when somebody screws up or what are some red sure. flags or what are some things you can do wrong. So I think that's really good that you do have those people that, like you said, you can use those as yeah. a reference point and you can right. also be like, oh, I'm, let me not do that. <laughs> True enough. And even, definitely so, definitely so. And even then, you know, even with that, we, we're st it's still inevitable that we're going to mess up, right? So um, as I was just talking to another artist, probably not even a whole two hours ago, 
And uh, we were just having a nice dialogue and, you know, I ended it up um, stating that, you know, a beautiful thing is never perfect. So, um, you know, even with art or even within the art business, understanding that you're going to make mistakes, but it's how you react and you respond to them that's key. That's good. You know what? You're just dropping all kind of life advice today. I love it. I love it. I love it. So speaking of that, and, and like you said, you get an idea, art's not perfect, things that you do. So how do you decide what you're going to paint? Um, so there's, that's a double-sided question because there's a thin perspective and there's a now perspective. Now, uh, well, the, I'll speak about then, uh, back then. So when I first started, um, I was just guided. I was just really guided by my body, my mind, spirit. So I could see a painting in my, I could, I could just be laying in bed and I can see a painting and I would just immediately just get up and just start painting, whether it's two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock, it didn't matter. Um, now, um, I take my time to spend, you just spend my time. I spend a lot more time brainstorming and, you know, just taking my time, understanding what level I'm at and trying to uh, to basically create art within that realm, but at the same time, push the line. So that's the uh, the now perspective of it. Mm, okay. Hmm. So more intentional, basically, than before you kind of just, the idea would come and you felt like I need to get this idea out of my head on a canvas ASAP or I'm going to lose it. And now it's more of the navigating and intentional part of it. Yes. So it's kind of like having a, um, a disc file in your head of, you know, just art and, the, there's there's certain pieces in your mind that you're not you may not be able to create or transform transmit into paint on on top of canvas the way that you wanted to get there. Uh, so understanding that okay, well I have to knock this painting out because it's within the realm of my creativity to get to this level to get to this level so I can knock this one out. It's the understanding that I have. So yeah, that is correct. Mm, okay. All right. That's interesting. So how long does it take? Oh, and there's Poochie in the back. Oh, um, <laughs> he has the cutest little dog, you guys. What, is that a Frenchie? He's a Frenchie. His name is Bosky. He's named after Basquiat. So, ah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, so so for anyone who's just listening and is not hearing, uh, I mean, not seeing, I'll, I'll, we're in the middle of talking and all of a sudden yeah. I see these two big giant ears just pop up. <laughs> <laughs> He wants, he wants to get some camera time. That's all right. I, my dog, too. That's why I have to lock her up. She's so right. jealous. So how long does it take you to do an actual piece? It depends. It's taken me anywhere from two hours to three years. I mean, I have pieces from COVID 2020 that I'm still working on. So, um, it, I mean, I have some pieces, like I said, it just, um, you know, I, I see it in my mind and I just knock it out immediately. Um, so anywhere from two years to three years, but or however long it takes. And it's not necessarily, and that's the thing about it. That's the key thing about, you know, art is that, and that's why my mentality is transformed is because I understand that, you know, it, 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 it doesn't matter the amount of time it takes, as long as you lay it out the way it's meant to be laid out and you can look at it and you say, okay, well, this meets my standard my personal standard, I just feel like even if the world accept it, accepts it or if they don't accept it, I'm fine with it. So I just try not to rush it. Um, but the ones that I feel like I can rush, I'll do it. And that's just for my soul, right? So so how, like, what are some of the things where you feel like a, a painting isn't, isn't right? Like whenever you're doing something and you're like, mm, this ain't it. Like, what are some of the things that you, you decide Mm, this wasn't going the way I wanted it to go. What are some of your like red flags or or things you're like, mm -mm, this ain't it? Um, just just the skill set that I haven't practiced on, skill sets that I haven't tapped in and honed in on. I think that's normally when I say, okay, well, I need to stop, go back to the drawing board, and even meet with me, y'all. Like I go on YouTube, I go on YouTube. Um, and just sit back and just say, okay, how, if, if I need to learn how to paint lips, I'll go on YouTube, 
how to paint your lips and that's it. So that's just, you know, uh, there's definitely times where I feel like my skill hasn't made it to that point to where I have it to where it lays down that image or that specific part of whatever uh, perfectly. And then I just go back and study it. So. Yeah. Mm. Okay, good. I love that. Lifelong learner, lifelong student, yeah, yeah. very important. Yeah. And so how do you decide how much you're going to charge for a painting? Based on emotion. And that's one of the things that I've learned from my, um, from a mentor of artists, my, my mentor artist, Flan. Um, he's, uh, he has ICDC studios. Um, it's just based on your energy. I feel like art is, uh, you know, it's appreciated uh, by the energy that you put in it. Um, so I feel like the value is, is in the energy and the accessibility. Um, so understanding that, okay, I look at a painting, I look at how much energy I put in it. I feel like, okay, well, I feel like I should charge this in order for it to come off my wall. And that's just what it is. And then guess what? If don't nobody buy it, it still looks nice right there. So <laughs> I'm good right so that's just it's just about energy right because even in even here like this is my home space this is my dwelling so even if nobody touches that painting or, or decides hey i want to spend whatever whatever the fee is for it i'm cool with it it'll sit right there and it'll look good for me in Bosque, of course <laughs> right 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 yes. right yes you're pnc now yeah. so so i know that whenever i talk to people i like i'm very processy I, I like i like to know like the steps for things okay. so explain to me because i want to know how you actually paint a picture so explain to me when you have an idea in your head do the colors come in your head when you're when you come up with the idea okay. how do you how do you start sketching it how do you decide what colors you are going to use? Like, tell me the, you just woke up and you have an idea in your head. Tell me all the steps that happen to get it to be in a picture on the wall behind you. <laughs> so I'll say, for instance, like the heart, um, of course, um, just without the background of it, but just the actual steps that I took, I knew that was what I wanted to create. So I went online, looked at an image of an anatomical heart. I looked at it, sketched it out. And then, um, like I said, a beautiful thing is never perfect. I laid it on canvas and I spent the first three, four hours just, just like looking, erasing, looking, erasing, looking, erasing. So once I got that image down, I realized, okay, well, let me go ahead and paint the, you know, the outlines or whatever. And, and, and then in that essence, at that time of my craft, it was basically backwards, but it was just what was necessary. So I go and paint the outline out. And then from there, that's when my creative juices start flowing. So that's when I, really, I look at an image and I say, okay, I want to put the gold right there. I want to put the red right there. I want to put the blue right there. And then while I'm laying it down, that's when I pick the actual tonage of the color. So I might go with the dark blue because the light blue looks different the way it bounces off the red. So, um, you know, that's just, it's, it's an ongoing thing. There's a, and, and most artists understand, um, I know it's kind of foreign talk, but most artists understand once you get to a certain level of a painting and you kind of got it down, you, you started getting your groove going, you start like, okay, I got it. Okay. We're going to do it like this. And then you just start rocking out. And that's just what I do. I just get it laid in front of me and I just rock out and, like I said, no matter how long it takes, you know, we, we, we just, we just, we just uh, enjoy the ride and enjoy the journey. Hmm. Okay. Got it. So I'm going to start painting. No. Yeah. <laughs> you should, you should. There's no such thing. You become a Holly, you become an artist as soon as you put a line on the paper and call yourself Yes. Artist. And I am an artist. Like you said yeah. earlier, I can't sing. <laughs> I can't dance. Yeah. I can't draw or paint. Now I'm gonna do all of yeah. those things, but nobody's gonna pay. Yeah. You never know. You never know. You never know. We were like, 
what kindergartner drew this? <laughs> Maybe in two years, I'll be interviewing you about your artist. I'll be calling you art, artist. Yeah, so that's, mm -hmm. <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah, I love no, it. I love it. Um, so most of the times when artistics, uh, artistic people are doing their crafts or whatever, they have other genres of art that they love. Okay. So can you tell us besides painting what are some of the other because i did see a couple of things um like i think there was something where you were like sculpting okay. so can you tell us some of the other things of art From artistry medium? that you do yeah yeah yeah. so i've um i've done a little sculpting that was just like a um a piece that i picked up and i reformed it to the way that i liked it um, and I added clay to modify it, and then I painted over it. But um, I've done um, I've done that miniature sculpting. Uh, sculpting. I've done um, I've done I've used like different types of of, of uh, fabric uh, to create art. Um, I've done I've made I've made art out of computers. Um, things of that nature, so all over. And then going from here, even going forward, like there's a lot of things that I wanna just dibble and dabble into. But um, like I said, we just try not to stay boxed in. Whatever whatever I can get my hands on and whatever I can see that's gonna say, okay, I'm gonna like this and it's gonna look good in the house, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> okay, I love that, I love that. And so, do you have a studio? At, like where do you do all your stuff? Right here on this table. Right here on the table. So I have a, um, I have an island in my, um, in my, in my spot, and I have like a, um, used, uh, it's like a, I, I bought like a mattress pad, um, some years ago, and basically I painted all over. It's real, you know, already, uh, you know, it's painted out now. But it looks like official painters. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So basically, I laid on the, I laid on the table, and um, I put that canvas down, and I just go. Um, other than that, I have like two or three easels uh, that I that I line up and I paint on as well, depending on what I'm doing. But I've done work on, you know, on f folding tables. I've done it on the floor. I've done it on the patio. I've done it in the grass. Whatever we need to do to get it done, we're going to get it done for sure. There you go. Yeah. And everything also has different lighting. So I See. know outside the 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 uv light makes things look different okay. so i know that's important too whenever you're looking at like you said the color schemes and right. how these hues look with this and stuff i remember that when i took that <laughs> one art oh. class in college <laughs> that i hated yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was like ma'am i thought i was gonna be in here painting like i did not know i was gonna have to learn about hues yeah. and what this and the color wheel like yeah. i just thought i would be able to just yeah. go to town exactly. and they were like no, you yeah they're like no you have to learn i'm like yeah exactly no, i respect it i respect that. <laughs> uh okay so i know that you have uh other things that you're doing okay. as far as uh projects or whatever so tell us about some of the other things besides being artists that you are using your name for um i've um still making art i'm um, making clothes so I'm into uh, making clothes. Of course, I have one of my older shirts on now. Um, even Bosky, he he's his harness has my name on it. So um, I'm just making clothes, apparel. Um, I think the next thing that I feel like I'm going to tap into might be men's wear and uh, women's wear. Um, so that might be something to be on the lookout for in the near future. Um, but yeah, mainly clothes for sure. And then there may be some other things I might jump into, but I think clothes is, I think going into clothing is going to be the next level for me, aside from art, in terms of not boxing myself in. Right, right. And that's part of that whole design sort of art artistic uh persona so i can definitely see how how that could lead into that yeah. and so what i always do is i say that <clears throat> whenever people have a passion mm -hmm. that 
it's kind of our responsibility, <clears throat> excuse me, it's kind of our responsibility to sort of pave the way for anyone that's coming up, inspire other people to do things, maybe go ahead and, and pursue their passions as well. Mm. So do you have any advice that you learned along your journey to defining what you love to do that you think that you would like to share with anyone who's thinking like, oh, you know what? I like to draw. I might be an artist. Just, I think with any aspect, even when it's, if it's not about art, um, but just any aspect, just loving when it doesn't love you back. I mean, um, and the great words in Nipsey Hussle, I've been through every emotion. I've been through every emotion with art. Um, I've dealt with a lot, gone through a lot, but the, the biggest thing was I decided to keep going. Um, and then, you know, once you, once you make that, dis once you make that, uh, distinguishing decision, then you're going to tap into levels that are monumental. And there's going to be people who's going to, um, going to help push you over whatever it is that you're going through. So definitely if you're thinking about being an artist or being anything, understand what you're getting into, understand the obstacles that you're going to, uh, you're going to go through understand what it's going to take for you to overstand, uh, uh, overcome those obstacles and then understand that you're going to have to keep going. And um, like I said, just love it when it doesn't love you back because it's a journey. And that's with any entrepreneur. Just get your hustle on. And, you know, that's I think that's what the main thing is. Get your hustle on. Hey, all right. You guys heard Jamar Drun gave y'all the best advice. Uh, y'all better listen. I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> so last question is drop all of your social media handles, your website information. Be sure to spell anything for anyone that's listening to the audio okay. and also just let people know how they can support you. Um, so my Instagram is Jamar Duran, J E R M A R D E R U N. My uh, website is www.jamarduran.com, which is the same, spelled the same way, J E R M A R D E R U N. So um, that's what you, where you can find me at. My YouTube is Jamar Duran as well. Um, so those are all the things that you can find. Those are all the places that you can find me at. But um, also, I also want to take the time out just to thank you for reaching out too. And um, taking the time, excuse me. I mean, this, you know, I, I feel like that's a, a very genuine gesture of you. And uh, we really, even from the culture, from a culture standpoint, we really, really, really need you. We appreciate you genuinely too. Oh, heart, heart. <laughs> thank you, thank yeah, you, yeah. thank you. I say that people like us are the change that we need in this world. And I think living your passion, sharing your passion, also sort of extending that branch for other people. Like I said, I've, you're very humble and, and giving that advice and, and those types of things, I think is very important for people who may not have that oomph that right. they need to get out and start living their dreams. So I love that. I love that. So yeah, for sure. And, and so I, last thing, I forgot to ask about this earlier. I saw something about Germany. So you grew up in Germany partially, or what's your... Partially. My folks were in the military. My folks were in the military. So um, we spent, I spent the first half of my childhood in, um, in Germany, uh, all over, mostly Germany. Um, and I spent the second half in uh, Millington, the Millington area of Tennessee, uh, Memphis, Memphis and Millington area of Tennessee. So... Uh, I spent the, you know, that's basically where I, where I was raised at. Yeah. Got it. Got it. And I think a lot of people, um, that, that have been to Europe or have some type of ties to Europe, mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people absorb that artistic trait yeah. because I know when I go to Europe, you, you're looking at all the architecture, you're looking at the paintings, you're right. looking at what, and it's whatever country you're in. It doesn't True. matter. True. Like, <laughs> You're you getting some European culture over there, yeah. and I think everything is so artsy. So it I do is, think that might be also maybe because you were exposed to it. That maybe might be so. a little maybe so. I love I one thing I appreciate about uh living over there is the art for sure. And I think that uh um in every in every facet of every facet of life, 
it's designed by artists. Um, from everything that we do, you know, from waking up to going to bed at night, we are submerged in something that somebody has created. And I really do feel like as us as artists, we dictate the curve and um, we set the trend. And that's just straight up. And you heard it from Jamar Duran. Yeah, so yeah, again, it. you guys, that is J E R J E M A R J E R M A R. I'm sorry. J E R M A R. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> D E R U N. Mm -hmm. So I'll have all of his social media, everything. I'll have everything tagged in the podcast notes as well. So thank you, Jamar. It was no so problem. nice to meet you. Likewise, likewise, likewise. And if anybody out there who's listening to this podcast has got to the end of it, we appreciate you. Um, we really, really thank you for your time. And if you're thinking about getting into not just art, but anything, and you don't know where to start at, reach out. I'm available, I'm accessible, and um, I'm willing to help. I love that, I love that. Okay, you heard it. Now don't be reaching out to me because I'll leave y'all a message request. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. But you could definitely reach out to Jamar. He yeah. loves mentoring, I yeah, love that. Sure, so, sure. Thank you, Jamar, love thank it, you. love it. Thank you, thank you.